that's the thing. It looks like a Volvo because it's boxy. It's also gold, which is obviously a colour you no longer see because it's hideous. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Grimsthorpe Castle, the new HQ of three <laughs> What do you, do you like what we've done with the place? Yeah, I know. Tell me about it. Anyway, yes, this is actually Grimsthorpe Castle. Welcome to Grimsthorpe Castle and the Haggerty Festival of the Unexceptional. <laughs> now this is an event that we didn't actually know existed until a few months ago when we were very kindly asked to come along and it just celebrates the unexceptional. Everything here is mint, absolutely mint. However, it's not your average car show. No, culturally they would be classed as terrible cars. They would, but in this world they are appreciated, they are, they are loved, and like I say, they are mint. So what we're going to do is wander around, not with GoPros this time, I think what we're going to do is find our top few picks and then we'll do little pieces on those because, yeah, it's just fabulous. There's so many cars here and so many people, it's great. Right, let's go. Huzzah. So, first choice. The way we're going to do this is our top five, because we did ten, there's too many cars. So, our combined top five. I have suggested the first be this. The Mazda. I think it's 939 or 929. Follow. <laughs> the 929, I was right first time. I picked this because as I was walking up to it, I went, oh, that's a nice Volvo. But it's not. That's the thing. It looks like a Volvo because it's boxy. It's also gold, which is obviously a colour you no longer see because it's hideous. <laughs> <laughs> but come, please. The reason why I chose this car, because other than looking like a fantastically practical Volvo, and it's a Mazda, look at the seats. Have you ever seen comfier seats? This car's still got the wrapping on the doors. That's how unbelievably pristine this unexceptional car is. And it's fantastic. The interior looks like a place I could sleep. And you've obviously got all of this metal, so if you do have an impact, you're completely safe and your children and everything shall be fine. Uh, also rocking some form of steel wheels, which I know is very much Alistair's street. At that this it moment. is. Brown leatherish in top, like this just reminds vinyl. me. Like, vi is it vinyl? Vinyl like, roof. Yeah. Fake leather, vinyl. But it's fantastic. And it's one of those things that if someone said, do you want it for a week? I would take it in a heartbeat. Yeah, imagine going camping or something yeah. in this. Look at the size of the boot. I know. It goes on forever. You can have at least three bodies in there. <laughs> Maybe two, I'm not sure. But it's lovely. <laughs> so that's Blind Mice choice number one from the Festival of the Unexceptional. So what we've just learned, actually, by the way, is that the Mazda that we've just had a look around, there's only three of those left tax on the UK roads, which is a fantastic little fact. We just spoke to the owner. Our second choice is this little Fiesta, because the roads that we used to get in here were single track, really tight, twisty, and we just thought you don't want anything too much, you don't want anything too powerful, you just want a small little hatchback, which there are a few here, and they're all fantastic. But as an example of how mint the unexceptional cars are here, this is above and beyond. There's even a mirror underneath the back box of the exhaust just to show you how clean it all is. Lovely RS wheels, and yeah, it's just really clean. It's got all the magazines and memorabilia involved with the car on the back, on the uh, parcel shelf. And yeah, so that's our second choice, the little Fiesta. Choice number three for the Blind Mice top choice of the Festival of the Unexceptional is this Saab 900 Turbo S. Don't forget the S, it's very important. It signifies sporty. Um, the reason I picked this, or we picked this, is because it's the style of the fact that there's no car like, well, they're not being made anymore. The size of the bumpers, the colour scheme, you've literally got burgundy on burgundy suede inside. Like, to, in contemporary language, it's hideous. But on this, it works. I know that in, within the car community, they are coveted as fantastic driving machines. I can't give you that feedback until the driver kind of gives me the keys later <laughs> on. Um, but it's just fantastic because you just, these cars that you turn up in that like, this is the whole point of this. They are classified in some ways as unexceptional. Not many people are dreaming of a side 900 Turbo S. But I now am as a result of the sexy looks that it brings across. It's just beautiful. And I love it. <laughs> Next up on the list of unexceptional choices that we deem worthy of this list is a car that neither you or I or most people I assume would go to buy. If you're looking for a 20, 30, 40 grand saloon, you'd probably go Audi, Mercedes, BMW. You may even think old Rolls Royce, a Bentley Flying Spur. There's many options. The one car that I bet didn't jump to your mind is the Toyota Centric, which 
having had a look around it, has got details in it that no other car I've actually ever seen. It's got cushions in the back with famous Japanese paintings. It's got like an entire sense console in the back with many buttons that clearly do lots of things. <laughs> God knows. You run a country from those buttons <laughs> in the back. There's that well, they many probably did run they the probably country. Did, they probably did. But it's the fact that here it stands in the UK, right-hand drive. Is it right-hand drive in Japan? Yes. Ah, yeah, there yeah. you go. That makes sense. So it might even be an import. But in the UK, there's a person who wants to earn this as opposed to any other luxury saloon he could. And for that very reason, it is a choice of the Blind Mice Top 5. <laughs> cool. Is it good? It is. Cool. So, the next car on our list is this. It's an Alfa Romeo Alfa Sud Ti. And... One more time. Alfa Romeo Alfa Sud Ti. <laughs> and we picked this because it's kind of the Alfa that you don't think of, you wouldn't buy you don't think of. Again, you see it and you think, yes. To be honest, prior to that today, would didn't be. know it existed. Didn't know it existed until today. And you just think, yes, that would be excellent. It's right-hand drive. It's got proper alpha wheels. It's got the quadrifolio on the side, which is the four-leaf clover, mm. as are. And yet, it just looks like a riot. And it's an Alfa Romeo, so how could you say no? Um, so yeah, the Alfa Romeo Alfa Sud Ti. Huzzah. Hello. Uh, you join us now on the concourse lawn, so obviously out there is yeah, where... Hang on, what's the concourse called? The concourse lawn, oh, what is it? Concourse, concourse de l'Ordinaire. De l'Ordinaire, yeah, yeah. So Fabulous name. Concourse of the Ordinary. Um, but obviously beyond that lovely gated section is where everyone can bring their so-called unextraordinary cars. But this section here is where the clean, beautiful version... This is like the top, this is like Pebble Beach for Ordinary. Um, and I kid you not, Look at the condition of this Ford K. <laughs> that is better than factory. Ford didn't push them out like that. That is the most clean example. You're literally on a lawn of it. A lawn of complete and other beautiful rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> also, not fangirling, but Richard Hammond is over there. And <laughs> that is a Richard Hammond over there, which is actually quite quite big for someone who used to watch them on TV, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, that is... You're allowed, you're allowed to fangirl no, not, Well, I can fangirl on camera, I'm not going to go fangirl in there, because that is unprofessional. Yeah. Um, what, ah, did you see that? I had a wasp in my t-shirt. <laughs> Wrapping up the end of the day, uh, and I think what I can take from this event is, usually when you come to, it is classed as a concourse event, you would be stood on a lawn of lovely, lovely supercars and vintage cars and classic cars that were all worth excess of six figures. Here, I am sat on the same lawn in front of a lovely, lovely house and a lovely event that's been put together really well with some high-class figures such as Richard Hammond and Mike Brewer. And these are the competing cars. I don't want to say that they're not very good cars, but the idea is they're highlighting cars that aren't exactly exceptional. And it's a really lovely thing because it's just an accessible event that you could genuinely bring your old car to, whatever you drive around. It's, one, it? of the, it's one of the nicest most interesting car events yes. I've ever been to. Weirdly, if you start going to a lot of these kind of events with supercars, you suddenly get quite turned off by the fact that you've seen a million Ferraris or McLarens or whatever else. This, there's a lot of things. Look at that quickly as we pan around. A Vauxhall Nova. Do you remember that from the mm -hmm. hatchback challenges they did many, many years ago? Like Just stuff like that. It's stuff that isn't what you would imagine at a concourse event. And that's really fun because it's probably the one event of the year in the UK that's slightly different. And for that fact, it is a triumph. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed our couple of picks from what we enjoyed and everything else from the day. And we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. <laughs>